What is going on guys? Today we talk about 5 scary videos that could be real. Uh, but before we get started, I'm just letting you guys know I have ordered my Oculus Quest 2 and hopefully we'll be getting it by the weekend uh, so that I can upload some VR content. Also, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let me know which video you found most compelling or if you know um, of a video that is very scary and real. I would love to see all of your guys' opinions. So please enjoy the video. At number 5, we have The Rake. I'm going to give it this name for now because it really does look like that creepy pasta story and pictures. Uh, this video took place 14 years ago, so back in like 2006 or around there. Take a look at the video. No, no, no. Eso es lo que ha sentido chulo. Toma, tío, ya veo si es el de chulo. Desde hace rato que siente chulo. Que sí, cuñones, que sí. Tía. Escolta. ¿Lo siento o no? Now, to me, this looks like an extremely ugly guy taking a dump in the woods, and he was caught. Like, that would be my exact reaction if I was spotted. I'd be like, ah, shit. However, considering this video is from 14 years ago, and there's plenty of copycat videos out there of this creature, I want to say this video maybe promoted the whole rake creepypasta, uh, because they both came out around, at around the same time. The creepypasta should have been around uh, 2005, and the video was made around 2006. Here's a few other images of the creature, some fake and I bet some are real. I just find it a bit crazy that there's a lot of videos and photos capturing this creature. I don't know if uh, maybe it is an actual physical being, or if it is some kind of demonic entity, uh, but the point being, if a thousand people say they saw a flying dragon, you can't just say those one thousand people are crazy. Uh, something is going on with this video and creature. At number four, we have the Phoenix Lights. In March 13th, 1997, lights appeared over Phoenix, Arizona. No one knows what they were, and the video basically speaks for itself. I will be playing an interview with former governor of Arizona, Five Symington. Uh, full interview will be in the comment section. March 13th, 1997. This event called Lights Over Phoenix. What did you see? Well, I saw a, uh, a huge craft just kind of come right over Squaw Peak um, that was, you know, it was just breathtaking. And um, I'm not sure about the, the date. You've, you've got a better memory March for the 13th. dates than I do. Yeah. But there was no, like the Clinton Day, no. No. <laughs> No, I was on a strict diet. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious now. That that it was a it was a U, unquestionably it was a UFO, which means unidentified flying object. Right. Doesn't nothing, mean we're being visited. Well, it's nothing like anything I've ever seen. And, and you're an Air Force guy. Yeah, yeah, and a pilot. Uh, got a lot of hours flying, so uh, it was pretty breathtaking. And um, and I'll never forget. I I snuck out to see it, um, you know, without DPS, um, which I. I'm not supposed to be driving my own car and that kind oh, of thing. Yeah. And so, uh, but I told Ann what I was doing. I was going to go up to Squaw Peak and see what everybody was, you know, clamoring about. And um, when I walked in the front door, she looked at me and I was apparently just, normally I'm fair complected and pale anyway, right? And she said, oh my gosh, she said, she'd look like a ghost. What, what, what did you see? And I said, well, I don't know what I saw, but it's, it was really something and I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wow! So Were you did it frighten you? No, I, no. I, I think I was kind of in awe, really. You know. How big? Bigger than anything I've ever seen in the sky. Like an aircraft carrier in the yeah, sky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And it, and it was hard to define because of the light, in terms of the size. But it but it was absolutely silent and had sort of eerie embedded lights and, you know. So that's what I saw. And I wasn't expecting to see anything because I was looking out over, at Luke. Uh, right. to the west and uh, 
and then all of a sudden these people in the park uh, area on the just on the west side of 51 there were a bunch of people there everybody said oh, look at that and we turned around and this thing was coming from the northwest traveling to the southeast we now know um, and it really hit me when when we were watching the Diamondbacks in game seven and the B1 flew over mm -hmm. over the it wasn't, bomb. Yeah, it wasn't a B1 bomber. But that thing all of a sudden out of nowhere appears. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I said to somebody that night, I said, well, you know, when they do test these, mm -hmm. they test them in populated areas. They're new stuff. They mm -hmm. test it to see if people detect it. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it was ours? Do you believe it was something from the U.S. government that they no. were kind of flying around? No, it wasn't even close to a B. It was much bigger than a B-1. A B-1 actually isn't that big. I mean, right. I mean, if it's, it's at low altitude, it'll appear a big, but no, this, this was totally different. At number three, we have the Loch Ness Monster, a.k.a. my boy Nessie. Loch Ness in Scotland it holds one of the biggest mysteries of all time. Take a look at this clip. Sorry guys if it doesn't show much, but this is majority of the sightings. People around the area have had many encounters with this creature. They have had similar experiences and claim to have seen the same creature. However, science is letting us know that it is very likely this is not a plesiosaurus. Discovery UK's channel sent scientists to test the water of Loch Ness and came out with many different types of DNAs in the water. They stated that the prehistoric DNA was not found or anything similar to that. However, the most abundant amount of DNA found was from eels. They wouldn't be surprised if there are giant eels in the lake since they could potentially grow to around 12 feet long. In this show called Monster Quest, um, they talked about how when wood is rotting, it releases gas, making it rise to the top of the lake. This could also explain plenty of sightings where people see some sort of head pop out and then go back down. But don't throw the towel just yet. Check this discussion that happened on channel this morning in October 2020, so just a few days ago. You know what I'm looking at. So, so the deep bit there is the bottom of the lock, right? The red bit. See the red line? That's, yeah. That's everything above that red line you should be looking at. Everything below it, forget it. Okay, and so the so, thing that's circled there that looks like the little blue croissant, yeah. as you called it, yeah. that's what we believe is Nessie? Absolutely, so, yeah. The boat has just passed over the top. That's 650 feet of water that it's in there. And it's down near the bottom. It's about 50 feet off the bottom. So the cruise boat that he's on is going along. That's the red line right at the very top of the screen there. And the cruise boat is traveling along. And that's like a timeline underneath the boat showing you what he's looking at. And he's passed over it for about 10 seconds. That big, solid, single object down 50 feet off of the bottom of Loch Ness, something the size of a transit van. This confirms that there is something down there that we are not aware of. It might not be a plesiosaurus, but it's something. At number two, we have Bigfoot. The most questionable video we have today is the Patterson-Gimlin film, where we can clearly see some sort of ape-like bipedal creature. I, I will do a side-by-side -side comparison of the original one and the new 4K HD remastered one. Take a look at this one. The amount of detail is just insane. Just so you guys know, many people think this is just a guy with a gorilla suit, which could potentially be true. However, the issue is that this is one hell of a gorilla suit, made in 1967. This is a picture of the best gorilla suit out there at that time, which was when uh, Planet of the Apes had just come out near that same time period in 1967. Comparing the two side by side, there's no way this is the same suit. The big for one is way better. If you pay close attention, to the chest area, you can actually see the famous Bigfoot is actually female. Um, I would zoom in to show you guys, but I would probably get demonetized. Oh wait, I don't get paid for this yet. So if you look closely, you can see some Bigfoot breasts. I never realized that when I saw the original one, but since this is more clear, you can kind of make it out. Also look at the muscle movement on the leg. This really looks like an actual leg, not just a costume. And finally, at number one, we have the legendary Mothman himself. It was so difficult finding footage of the Mothman, I literally only found like three different videos. Um, and two of those three were just so clearly faked. Um, this video was submitted to the team cast in Fact or Faked Paranormal Files in Season 1, Episode 11. I could not find the original one on YouTube. Uh, if you guys know it, please link it down below. It's a bit blurry uh, since it was filmed with a potato-ass camera. 
but if this was not hoaxed, then this must be one of the best videos out there that capture the Mothman on film. Now, I understand the video might not seem real, I mean, it's too blurry to tell. However, the story of the Mothman is real to so many people in West Virginia, Point Pleasant. I will read a quick chunk of the first-hand account document. I looked up and saw it go around the corner at the old powerhouse. It didn't run, but wobbled, like it couldn't keep its balance. Its wings were spread just a little. We sat there a few seconds, then Roger took off. I kept yelling for him to hurry. We didn't even stop for the curves. We got out on Route 62 and was coming down the road, and that thing was sitting on the second hill when you come into the first bad curve. As soon as our lights hit it, it was gone. It spread its wings a little and went straight up into the air. When we got to the armory, it was flying over our car. We were going between 100 and 105 miles per hour down the straight stretch, and that thing was just gliding back and forth over our back end of the car. As we got there in front of the lights by the resort, it dived out of our car and went away. And if you guys want to see the real documents, you have to actually go to the Mothman Museum in Point Pleasant. But I left a link down below of uh, just a copy of it, so someone actually wrote it all down. And yeah, there is actually a Mothman museum out there. It's crazy that this will be built to prove the existence of the Mothman. And on top of that, there is even a statue of the creature. But basically, to summarize the encounter, a couple are driving down the road and they claim to have been followed by some creature chasing their car with big uh, red glowing eyes. After that encounter, the next big event took place. The Silver Bridge Collapse in 1967. Hundreds of witnesses claiming that they have seen a flying humanoid with red glowing eyes around the bridge for a few days. And then of course, a few days later, the bridge conveniently just collapses, and the Mothman is never to be seen again. There is a quick picture that was taken back then, after this event. People speculated that this creature just creates bad luck when seen. Um, and unfortunately, there is only a few drawings of the Mothman, um, a few pictures of the Mothman, and close to zero videos of him. This is why this video has to be one of the weirdest clips out there of him, in my opinion. I hope you guys found the video entertaining. Please, if you made it this far, make sure to like, subscribe for more content. I will be making some VR content pretty soon. And if you guys want to see another video like this, just let me know in the comments. If it gets a good amount of likes, I will make another one. Um, now, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.